Welcome back everyone to our classroom called the College of Glycation. I am Paul Reynolds, a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. And today we're tackling a topic that's as insidious as it is fascinating, glycation and cardiovascular disease. If you caught our last handful of episodes, you'll know that glycation is like sugar throwing a molecular tantrum, gluing itself to proteins and fats, and in the process, creating chaos. Today, we're building on that, zooming into how glycation and its toxic byproducts, advanced glycation in products or ages, sabotage your heart and blood vessels. We'll cover hypertension, atherosclerosis, stiff vessels, heart health, stroke, and even heart attacks, with a deep dive into insulin resistance as a key culprit. Plus, we'll trace the history and trends of this science backed by solid peer-reviewed studies. So let's kick things off with a quick refresher on glycation, because it is, in fact, the foundation of today's story. Glycation is what happens when sugar molecules like glucose get a little too cozy with proteins, lipids, and even DNA. No enzymes, no invitation, just sugar bonding where it shouldn't belong, forming irreversible compounds called advanced glycation end products or ages. Picture ages as a molecular gum stuck to your body's machinery, clogging things up and causing trouble. These ages are bad news. They accumulate in uh, when blood sugar is high, again, you're thinking of diabetic conditions in that regard, or even just as a diet heavy with refined carbohydrates. Ages can cross-link to proteins, turning flexible tissues into rigid tissues, or they can bind onto the receptor for ages called RAGE, and that will spark inflammation and oxidative stress. This set of events sets the stage for cardiovascular disaster because your heart and blood vessels are in fact prime targets. As we'll see, ages are like vandals in a museum, defacing the delicate structures that keep your heart working well and blood flowing in a way it should. So how do ages turn your cardiovascular system into a war zone? Well, let's walk through the major players hypertension, atherosclerosis, vessel stiffening, and their downstream effects on heart health, stroke, and heart attacks. Buckle up, this is where it gets real. Number one, first, hypertension or high blood pressure. Ages can stiffen blood vessels by cross-linking onto proteins like collagen and elastin in the walls of, our, of your arteries. Normally, your arteries are flexible like a rubber band, but ages make them brittle, kind of like a dried out twig. This rigidity forces your heart to work harder and therefore it will spike your blood pressure. In 2004, about 20 years ago, there was a study published in the American Journal of Hypertension and the researchers showed that breaking age crosslinks with a compound called algebrium reduced arterial stiffness and lowered blood pressure in diabetic animal models, proving that ages are active players in hypertension. Next, let's talk about atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaques that clog our arteries. Ages are like the masterminds behind this heist. They modify LDL cholesterols, making it more likely that they form foam cells, the foundation of plaques. They also bind to rage, the receptor for ages, and in the process, they ramp up inflammation, usually using a very common pathway orchestrated by NF-kappa B. In 2004, there was a paper published in Cardiovascular Research, a group led by Mr. Basta, Dr. Basta, and he showed that ages increase vascular inflammation, promote clotting, and accelerate plaque formation especially in the framework of a diabetic patient. This is why atherosclerosis loves high glucose environments. What about the stiffening of vessels? Well, uh, vessel stiffening ties into both of these conditions. Ages don't just stiffen arteries, they make them less responsive to nitric oxide, which is a gas that normally keeps vessels relaxed and open. 
This endothelial dysfunction is a precursor to both hypertension and atherosclerosis. If you have a poor tendency to respond to nitric oxide, hypertension and atherosclerosis may be around the corner. In 2008, a seminal study published in arteriosclerosis, thrombosis, and vascular biology found that ages impaired vessel relaxation in diabetic mice, and they linked glycation directly to vascular damage. Heart health generally should also be considered. Ages infiltrate heart muscle quite easily, and they cause diabetic cardiomyopathy, where the heart stiffens and struggles to relax, leading to diastolic dysfunction. Over 20 years ago, in 2003, there was a study by Candido et al., and they published their work in circulation research in the process showing that age cross-linked breakers improve heart function in diabetic rats. Again, as the other research suggested, highlighting the role for ages in heart damage. Then there are some extreme cardiovascular complications, such as stroke and heart attacks. Atherosclerotic plaques fueled by ages can rupture, forming clots that block blood flow to the brain or the heart. In 2016, there was a study published in the Journal of American Heart Association, and they found that skin autofluorescence, that's a marker for age accumulation, predicted cardiovascular mortality, including stroke and heart attack risk, especially in patients that were at high risk. Ages make vessels more prone to thrombosis, which is a blood clot phenomenon, thereby upping the odds of these cardiovascular catastrophic events. In short, ages are the thread weaving together these cardiovascular disaster, stiffening, inflaming, and clogging your vascular system until something gives. So let's talk now about the engine driving this glycation nightmare. And that engine is insulin resistance, or your body's losing the ability to respond to the hormone insulin. If ages are the bullets, insulin resistance is the gun. So what is it? Well, insulin resistance is when your cells, think of your muscle, fat, liver cells, start ignoring insulin's orders to take up glucose from the blood. The result, blood sugar stays high, and that's like rolling out the red carpet for glycation. Now, why is this bad, you might wonder? Well, high blood sugar means more glucose molecules are available to crash into proteins and lipids, forming ages irreversibly at warp speed. These ages then wreak havoc in blood vessels and the heart, as we have just discussed, stiffening the arteries, promoting plaques, and inflaming everything along the way. But insulin resistance doesn't stop there. It also messes with lipids, raising triglycerides and low D, uh, LDL, which ages can then modify to make even more plaque friendly. In 2019, there was a study published in the journal Nutrients, and they showed that ages directly worsen insulin resistance by reducing glucose transporter 4, or GLUT4, in muscle and fat cells. Those are the transporters that these cells use to get blood, sugar, lower in the process of acquiring the sugar into the cells. And this creates a vicious cycle. For blood vessels, this is a disaster. Ages reduce nitric oxide production, impairing endothelial function, the small cells that line blood vessels, and driving those conditions we've talked about already, namely hypertension and atherosclerosis. In 2008, there was a study that confirmed this, and they showed that ages caused endothelial dysfunction in diabetic models. These endothelial cells became dysregulated. In the heart, ages and insulin resistance tend to team up, and they promote fibrosis and stiffening of heart muscle tissue. And that will, in time, increase your risk for heart failure. In 2011, there was a study published in the journal Diabetes Care, and the researchers found that higher plasma age levels, that means the number of ages in the blood, 
were linked to more cardiovascular events in type 1 diabetes, where insulin resistance often lurks alongside hyperglycemia. Insulin resistance, then, is the megaphone amplifying glycation's effects, turning your blood vessels into rigid pipes and your heart into a stressed out machine. Who wants it, right? Let's take a historical tour, therefore, of how we've come to understand the role of glycation in cardiovascular disease. This is a story of scientific detective work, and it's still unfolding. In the 1980s, Michael Brownlee laid the groundwork for this in a published paper in the journal Nature in 2001 that accumulated all of these data, and he showed how glycation and ages drive diabetic complications under high glucose conditions. This was a light bulb moment, and in fact, many researchers have cited this work in relation to their own. And this light bulb moment linked for the first time in the literature hyperglycemia to vascular damage via oxidative stress and inflammation. Fast forward a few years and in the 90s, the age-rage connection took center stage. Researchers at that point soon realized that rage activation wasn't just a diabetic issue. It, in fact, can fuel inflammation and atherosclerosis in anyone with high age levels, including ages that come from your diet. The 2004 cardiovascular research paper I mentioned earlier was also a milestone, which detailed how ages interact with endothelial cells, monocytes, and smooth muscle cells, all working together to fast track atherosclerosis. Now, by the 2000s, the focus shifted to solutions. Scientists tested age inhibitors and cross-link breakers. Those are small molecules that prevent the binding of sugar without enzymes onto protein targets. In 2004, American Journal of Hypertension study showed that algebraum, which I mentioned earlier, reduced stiffness in diabetic models. And this was also shown in human trials, although slightly less conclusive. Meanwhile, dietary ages became a hot topic in the 2010s. In 2010 specifically, a study published in Diabetes Care showed that high dietary age intake, again, ages come primarily from processed foods, overly grilled or well-done meats, and sugary treats. All of those dietary ages correlated with oxidative stress and inflammation even in non-diabetics, and those are two drivers for poor heart health. Now, recent trends are developing, and they are pushing the boundaries. Ages are now being studied as biomarkers. The 2018 study, published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, used skin autofluorescence, once again, a way to detect ages in the body, and they found that that autofluorescence correlated or predicted well cardiovascular mortality, <clears throat> including stroke and heart attack risk. Now, the suggestion there is that there's a future for non-invasive age testing. Now, let's talk about a new trend that is, quote, metabolic memory. And this trend is where past hyperglycemia leaves lasting age-driven damage. This is an innovative approach, one that began with studies that were published in 2017, one in the Journal of Diabetes. Yamagishi and his co-workers highlighted the role for ages in this phenomenon, explaining why tight glucose control doesn't always erase, erase rather past glycemic sins. Today, the science is clear. Ages are a universal cardiovascular threat amplified by modern diets and insulin resistance. Researchers are now exploring lifestyle interventions and novel therapies to curb ages, and it's an exciting time for heart health generally. All right, folks, let's wrap this up. Glycation and ages are like molecular termites chewing away at your blood vessels and your heart. They drive in the process hypertension, atherosclerosis, vessel thickening, and stiffening, as well as a risk for stroke and heart attacks. Keep in mind, insulin resistance all the time will be pouring fuel on this fire. 
From Brownlee's pioneering work to modern biomarker studies, the evidence is undeniable. Ages are a major player in cardiovascular disease, and they are not just a problem in the diabetic world. So what can you do? Well, let's start with controlling blood sugar. Ditch the refined carbohydrates and the processed foods that are both high in ages. Move your body. Prioritize sleep and manage stress to tame insulin resistance. We'll dive deeper into additional practical tips beyond just these in future episodes, so stay tuned. And finally, always stay curious. Keep learning about your metabolic health because knowledge can prepare you to better take care of your heart and your metabolism. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Remember, stay sharp and stay healthy.